बोल हरी बोल Shri Adi 
का गुराधा Hare 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 
Hare Krishna. 
She is senior, and from beginning she is associating with his guru. They also to me, and he is so expert in all these things. Don't see that he is female devotee. Hmm? What devotees know? That he is inferior, not intelligent or males like males. You don't think at all. <laughs> The real truth is that I asked to Narayan Maharaj a few years ago that when I'm in ISKCON temples, because I'm Prabhupada's second lady disciple, I feel like I'm sitting. Who first? Uh, Janaki. Janaki. Uh, she, I think Janaki she's not. Hmm? Janaki Devi. Where? She used to be uh, Makunda Maharaj's wife, but I, I think she left. Oh. Then you are, you are first. No, she <laughs> um, so I said to him, when I'm in this kind of society, I feel like I'm senior. But when I'm in your society, when I'm in front of you, I feel like I'm junior to junior. So Shula Narayan Maharaj said, yes, you're only one or two days old. So that's the actual truth. A newborn baby. So this song by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari, as you know, was always sung by Srila Prabhupada before his Srimad Bhagavatam classes. This song, Srila Gurudev explains, is one of the evidences that our Srila Prabhupada was not, as many of us, including myself, were preaching for so many years before meeting Gurudev, we're preaching that our Prabhupada was only in Sakuras, but the, this songs being sung by him regularly and so many other songs and so many of other of his activities shows that our Prabhupada was in the highest attainment that a jiva can possibly be in, which is as maidservant of Srimati Radharani. And Srila Prabhupada is in the disciplic succession from Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur who himself states in his prayers of Gita Mala that I am Kamala Manjari, maidservant of Srimati Radharani. No cowherd boy or um, anyone in Vatsalya Ras or what to speak of Dasya Ras can sing this song or can write this song. So Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari. Jai is also very significant. Srila Maharaj explained Prabhupada gave us the introduction to the meaning of jai, you know, spiritual victory or victory over maya. And Srila Gurudev put a flashlight or a very strong light on Prabhupada's words in explanation of jai 
to show us the deep meaning of Prabhupada's definition. That is, Jai means victory, Swapaksha. Whenever there's one side, there's always the Vipaksha or the opposite side. So when there's a victory, there's always a defeat of the opposite side. So whenever we sing any song with Jai, it's not just a glorification, but it's actually a prayer. All of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur's apparent glorification songs are actually prayers to the personalities whose names are in the song, like Radha Madhava, Jasoda Nandana, Giri Hari. So Jai means you, uh, either Gurudev or Radha Madhava, Jasoda Nandana, Giri Hari, you're on one side, and my senses and my mind are on the other side. So please, you I'm be... My senses like demons. Demons. My senses are like demons on the other side. So you please be victorious over my demoniac mind and demoniac senses. And when the party is victorious over the defeated party, they control them. They take complete control. So you please take control over my mind and senses, and you please manifest in my purified heart and let me enter into your eternal service. So Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari, as we sing every morning, Sangsara Dava Navavida Loka, Nikunja Jorno Ratikeli Siddhoi, that the Shad Guru, the pure devotee, the spiritual master, either Diksha or Shiksha, is always engaged in the Astakaliya Leela services of Radha and Madhava in the Kunjas of Vrindavan. The eight Praharas, there are eight three-hour periods in each day of Goloka Vrindavan and the spiritual master is always engaged in service in the Kunjas, sometimes in Yavit, sometimes in Nandagam, sometimes serving the gopis who are serving Radha and Madhava. Gopi Jana Balaba, Giri Bhadidhari. There's two things. There's the noun and the adjective. The adjective explains the noun. According to the relationship with Krishna that a devotee has, Krishna will be a certain noun. For example, uh, to Mother Yusoda, Krishna is uh, uh, Lala or um, Kanaya, um, some name that shows he's mainly my son. And she sees everyone in relation to Krishna being her son. There was one complaint that, uh, made, that was made to Yasoda that Krishna is having too much association with the gopis. Maybe he should get married. So Mother Yasoda answered, married? What are you talking about? He's still drinking my breast milk. So she, oh, she can't see Krishna in any other way but as her son, as her little son. So that's for her the noun. And another name of Krishna might be the adjective. But for those in Madhurya Ras, Jasoda Nandan is the adjective to explain Radha Madhava or to explain Gopi Jana Balava, to explain that Krishna is the lover of the gopis. So in this case, because Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is a servant of Radha Madhava in Kunjas, uh, Kunja Bihari, those who always have eternal pastimes in the Kunjas of Vrindavan, for him, Jasoda Nandan is the adjective, and Radha Madhava or Gopi Janabalaba is the noun, is the main thing. And this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give, this Unat Ojvala Rasam So Bhakti Sriyam which no other avatar or incarnation gave since long, long time before, in the previous day of Brahma, some trillions of years ago, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came at that time. Since then, and after then, it won't be given. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur is in that mood of a servant of Radharani, and therefore he's singing with those adjectives and those nouns. Jasoda Nandana, Braja Bhadanagara. Raja Bhada Nagara. Nagara means beloved or lover. 
and Nagara is no Nagara unless he's with Nagari or his beloved. Nagara means, Srila Gurudev explained, just as he explained as I mentioned this morning, that what does Gopinath mean? What does Radhanath mean? That Krishna's Nath or Krishna's Lord is the gopis and primarily Radharani. So similarly in this case, what was the name? Hmm? Oh, Brajabhara Nagara. Nagara. Oh, Brajajana, different song. The other song is also by Bhakti Vinodhaka. But we can use it here too. Brajajana Ranjana. Krishna is pleasing to all the inhabitants of Braja. But who is he most pleasing to? He's most pleasing to the gopis. And that's why Krishna wanted to be, to taste himself like the gopis and specifically Radharani tasted him. So Brajajana Ranjana is ultimately that same person, Gopinath, Gopijana Balaba. Jasoda Nandana, Brajajana Ranjana, Jamuna Tira, Banachari. Yes? So Jamuna Tira Banachari is also in relation to that because Krishna roams in the Jamuna for a specific purpose. As Gurudev was explaining the other evening, the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Jan Madhyasya Yataha, Jan Madhi Yasya means Adiras. Adiras, according to Viswanath Chakrabarti Thakur, and our Srila Prabhupada also quotes Srila Viswanath Chakrabarti Thakur in the sixth canto and also the purport to the second verse of this first chapter that uh, Adi Ras means Sringa Ras or Madhurya Ras and all other Rases in the spiritual world emanate from this Sringa Ras and its service is to, to nourish Sringa Ras and in return it gets nourished just like why does Krishna go to the Jamuna he may take out his cows but only as an excuse to meet Radharani and the gopis. And for this reason, he loves the cows so much, because they give him an opportunity to serve Radharani and the gopis. Therefore, he massages the cows, he feeds them with his own hands, he milks them. So in this way, all rasas in the spiritual world come from this Adi Ras, and all the perverted reflected rasas also come from these five rasas which originally come from Adi Ras. So Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur very mercifully has given us this song to beg for the mercy of Radha Madhava. And as Srila Gurudev always points out, our Srila Prabhupada is always singing this song with tears in his eyes because Prabhupada wanted to give. He's not a servant of Mahavishnu. He's a servant of that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who is Prajendra Nandan Sri Krishna. Um, Sachi, Su Sachi Sunam Nandishvara uh, Pati Sutatve that his Lord Chaitanya is non different from Pajendra Nandan Sri Krishna covered by the mood of Radharani to give this Unat Ujwala Rasam Svabhakti Sriyam and our Prabhupada is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy energy as is Srila Gurudev. Thank you, Gaur Prima Someone has asked Swamiji was only a friend of us. That he was like a friend. At any time, cannot glorify Krishna. Jaya Punja Bihari. Can you do? There is no right to this. Radha Madhava. Jaya Punja Bihari. Especially this. Those who are in it. They will not appreciate. So, I told that actually he was not a friend, friendless Swami. He can make any poetry like this sometimes. Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written so many kinds of poetry. Sometimes Krishna like sun, sometimes like Dasharas, uh, Shakharas, Vasadharas, so many things. But actually he was Kamal Manjari. So Samizhi had made some poetry in a special case 
for a special thing like friend ras but how he can glorify him it is in only friend ras jaya kunj bihari jamuna tat banachari what is the meaning very deep meaning not with uh, going with coward boys and cows with at jamuna what is this oh krishna is waiting and where waiting oh gopi will come to take water from jamuna actually not taking water from jamuna but taking nectar of love and devotion in their heart pot so when they come to jamuna gopis waiting for krishna krishna is also waiting for them. and they are not eager to take water from jamuna they are very eager to fulfill their this heart for with fart love and affection so they may return empty without water but full of water that is the meaning of jamuna like jamuna what jamuna tira banachari always going very eagerly to to jamuna by jamuna oh that was the place meeting place there they are both promised that we will meet there so both are eager to meet very very deep meaning banachari means uh, those who are like uh, animals external meaning like this word meaning like this banachari very chari banachari means oh going to forest very low class of persons here and there they have no religious minded nothing but here banachari banda here ban mane banda bana very glorious the beautiful garden of transcendental garden of home banda de for krishna and radha ka meet this place is for the meeting oh so many groups so many kunj so many kunj why so many kunj one more kunj was enough for meeting and radha and krishna but shrimati radhika will not be satisfied but why when will she will satisfy so i gave an each one separate separate kunj and trickly she will by trick oh she will have give chance to all sakhi that krishna should meet there so here jamuna tira these groves of bindavan oh very beautiful made by banda devi to meet conjugal to meet all with all the gopis banachari krishna always is happy you at it if krishna is sleeping and no sense but his feet are so much what habituated that even in sleepness they will go there so banachari means to meet with gopis who are gopis actually they are not separated from krishna you cannot separate can you separate the heat and fire understand heat yeah. and fire you can separate. separate from fire that heat if you are separating then no fire only ashes so heat is life and soul of that fire without heat no fire you know kasturi mask 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 oh very beautiful scent mask scent that scent cannot be taken out from mask if it is taken no mask if sun uh, from sun you will take heat and light 
notion. They are one thing. You cannot divide. So Radha, Krishna, Pranaya, Vikriti, Ladeni, Shakti, Smat, Ekatma, Nama, Vibhu, Puradeha, Vedanga, Tau, Tau, Saun, Chai, Sannakya, Prabhata, Madhuna, Tad, Vayan, Aptam, Radha, Bhava, Sur, Duti, Subhaditam, Nami, Krishna, Sarva. Sarvda Modar, he wrote Radhaya Pranay Mahima Kutrisha. But before this he compiled this slow to make careful. Then don't see that Radha and Krishna are two things. In Vedas, in Upanishadas, in Srimad Bhagavat, everywhere it has been told, Shakti, Shakti, Mato, Avedaha. Power and position. Potency. 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 One thing. Potent and potency. Potent and potency. One thing. Only two words. You cannot divide them. Like I told, sun, it's hot, it light and you get it. From Moscow, you cannot take the scent. But we can think something like if you are sitting here and one person is sitting in the last corner of this room, Musk is here, Musk is not going there, but that person can smell the eh? fragrance. So fragrance can go. Hmm? Fragrance can go. You cannot see there that must, but her fragrance may go. So Krishna and his power, both are one. Krishna is here, but his power can go everywhere. So we can think like this, but actually if we can divide the saint and the moss, you cannot divide. As there is Persian. Can you tell that there is something, we separated poison and its effect? We can. So everywhere this natural thing is there. So Radha and Krishna actually not too. But we are habituated in this my world that this thing will be either one or two. Shakti and Shaktiman. We can think one or always two. But all Shastra. Making careful us don't see that Radha and Krishna are both oh, separate. Separate thing. Srimati Radhika is female and Krishna is male. He is lover, he is beloved. Beloved. Don't think. You are thinking here, but actually this is not. Krishna is so powerful, powerful. Srimati Radhika is so powerful. They are same. Only two bodies. Only two. Enjoyment. What are Vilas? Vilas. Vilas means a test there. Happiness. Because naturally like that. So you cannot imagine. So what I told yesterday in my class, it seems that Radhika and Krishna to, to separate and Krishna is beloved of Radhika and Radhika is beloved of Krishna like a lust. This kind of things thought is bound to come for those who are conditioned. So we should not think like this. Here also Kunja Vihari. We are thinking that there is a Kunj, separate, made of so many trees and creepers, and here so many gopis are assembled, and Krishna is dancing and making so many villas. So we can follow him very easily. Oh, very 
very very rare devotee even bim lamangal was not qualified for this not qualified he pinch eyes blind you know all these things why these are problems some him for him that he left chintamani his wife children and world everything and he was coming to bindavan and he saw some very beautiful teen years ago girls and they were pulling water from well there was no thirst but he became thirsty why as per last he saw the girls and he was uncontrolled and he went oh i am so thirsty can you give me some water why not mege water and water he was taking water from his mouth but he was drinking beauty through <laughs> and he became uncontrolled that girl went to his her house he followed him and then when he went to the door the husband of that girl was there who are you mahatma ji mahatma ji you know mahatma ji simply person because long long there uh, there sir i can't in way come he thought that he must be any simply person he asked oh what do you want do you want some chapati bread chapati or anything No, no. I want to see, meet your wife. That when this girl. Oh, he was so pious person. He never. He thought that he will beg for from my wife something. So he called. She came at once. Then he folded hands to girl and told, "I want that you should give that." Happy, happy, happy. He thought that any thorn, thorn has entered in his feet or it, but there was surely thorn, and it, it was not in the feet. Where it was? Very long, uncontrolled, and he took cigarette happily. That scent has no soul, nothing. So and from maybe gone there, so happily see. Okay, and in this I'm seeing and seeing, they were seeing, and he talked to and <coughs> that there will be no bamboo and <coughs> no <coughs> float. Understand why? There is no bamboo. There is no float. So I should cut the bamboo from root. There that no there should be no float. Uh, understand what I am telling? What I am telling? There is no cause that there is no action. Well, Maharaj is saying he is translating one of the biggest Hindi phrase. Na rahega baas, na bajegi baas nahi. When there is no bamboo in the world, no one can play over the flute. Hmm. So there is no bamboo and there will be no flute playing. So there will be no eyes, no problem. No lust. Can you be like that? Can you? For Krishna? Very <coughs> hard. And if you be like that, then you can have that called transcendental love. Then you can know the love and um, between Krishna and Gopis. They are actually not separated. Only for the mercy to sprinkle mercy to this worldly person, <coughs> they have become two. And when they are one, they are he is called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when they are two, but when who who is first? One is first and two is second, or two is first and one is. Who became first? <laughs> In slightly order, both are. 
So you should try to realize. And then go to that slope. Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kidrisho Vaneva Ashwado Jena Patamadal. And then a good impression will come. Otherwise you cannot. It is for not ordinary or beginners. Or it is for whom highest, highest person. Not for Pralhadam, Pralad Maharaj. He is Bhagavat, but not Pralad Maharaj. Hanuman is Bhagavatam, Bhagavatottama, but it is not for Hanuman. More than that, Pandavas are more, superior. more superior, but it is not for Pandavas. They cannot think like this. Amen for Uddha, it is not that. He can pray like that. He cannot have a dust of gopis. He cannot be because he has so much appellant for Krishna. He is of Mathura. He is undivided part of Mathura. Only Mathura came to see the glory of gopis, Krishna sent by Yoga Maya. Uddhav is not Uddhav, but he is representative of Mathura. Representative of Mathura. Oh, Mathura should see how glorious Vrindavan and gopis are. They are undivided part of Krishna. So, if you want to be like this, then always associate with high class of devotee. And try to remember Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj, you know? Bharat Maharaj? Oh, he was, who was Bharat Maharaj? And why I told that you should remember? What? In brief you can tell. Here, patiently. So this past time, I did not know very clearly, but I will say something. You have heard so many times. If you are not telling, I will Take your ears. <laughs> <laughs> so Bharat Maharaj, he was one of the sons of Maharaj Vishapdev. And Maharaj Vishapdev, he had 100 sons. And he had left Bharat Maharaj to be emperor of the world. So when Bharat Maharaj was um, middle-aged, he was about 50,000 years of age. Then he renounced his kingdom and he went to perform austerities. So um, when Bharat Maharaj he was performing austerities by the banks of the any river. Of any river, <laughs> then he saw a deer was crossing the river, a doe. And as the doe was crossing the river, then from a distance there was a tiger and the tiger um, roared very loudly and the doe was pregnant so the doe crossing the river um, in the shock of it all then the, um, the baby gave birth to the baby um, and the doe crossing the river due to the whole shock the doe died but before the doe died the doe in a very, with a very pitiful glance had looked towards um, Bharat Maharaj, who was performing his meditation, um, pleading for help. And Bharat Maharaj, seeing the situation that there was this um, um, baby there that was lying there, mother had just passed away, then he went and having compassion, because the nature of a sadhu is a sadhu is compassionate, he went and he took this baby there and he started to um, take care. So, as time went on, um, this baby deer, having no other protection but Bharat Maharaj, would always um, come up and crawl up on Bharat Maharaj's lap as he was performing his meditation and sit by his feet. And Bharat also, he became very affectionate to the deer and would um, caress the deer, take care of the deer in so many different ways. 
what became of the Bhajan gradually? So gradually, as um, Bharat Maharaj, his affection started to go towards the deer, then his bhajan started to become, it started to dissipate, it started to decrease. wane, it started to decrease. And um, in there is no time at all to chant, remember, to do all these activities for Krishna. He forget all this. He kept his very on a eh? nail, nail. Oh, anywhere. <laughs> and he forgot that I should do three times and he can send When he used to see it at once, oh, um, running, coming that year. And if he was not there, oh, where he is? And he is sitting. And he said, oh, where has he gone? Huh? Has he been attacked by any animal? What? Why he is not coming? And at once he will come running. And doing that, oh, you are sitting like this. So gradually, he stopped his all these things. He left his father, mother, so many wives, children, everything. But here again, uh, he was so much attached with a dear. He was not son, he was nothing. Like so. And then gradually one day. So one day, um, Bharat Maharaj, the time came that he had to leave his body. Group of deers came and running with them, he went away with them. And now he is lamenting, where that deer has done? Where, 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 where? I cannot live by that. He was so quiet, he was so good one. So he was lamenting and then in the meantime what came? In the meantime, death came. Death came knocking on his door. Mm-hmm. And it's stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Yam Yam Bhapi Smaram Bhavam, Chajat Yante Kalevaram, Tam Tam Evati Konteya Sadatat Bhava Bhavita. That whatever state of being one is at at the time of death, or whatever one is thinking, or meditating on, then that state he will attain in his next birth. So, what is the here teaching? So here, there is a very important teaching in this pastime and a very practical teaching which will give inspiration for the sadhaks who are interested in entering into the eternal pastimes of the divine couple. As uh, Govinda Bhaktapu described, yam yam vapismam bhavam tadyatente kalevaram. Whatever state our consciousness is in, whatever we remember at the time of death, we will attain to that state. And the example of Bharat Maharaj proves, proves this without a doubt. But for the sadhak, there is another meaning here. What is that? Srila Rupa Goswami first you should explain first. First more clear. When if anyone is attached to their wife, husband, their dogs, their anything, their body, anything. At the time of death, it will come automatically. Your dog will come. And if you are remembering your dog, you will be dog. (coughs) If you are so much attached to your wife and you are remembering your wife, then you will be female, woman very lusty. And if any lady is this, <coughs> so much attached whole life in lust and he is, she is remembering anyone, then he will be that. If anyone is cruel hearted, always have some cruelty with all, then he may be tiger or serpent, snake or a scorpion. That is why so many kinds of species are seen in this world. So, what you are doing in your life and with attached attachment, 
then you will bound to be like that. So don't do like that. And second, Bhattara. Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, he has written there some very wonderful instructions. Krishnam smaram janam chasya prastam nija samihitam tatkat katar tascaso kuryadvasam braje sada that one should try to train, train the mind to always remember Krishna along with his associates. Mm -hmm. Not to remember only Krishna because if one simply remembers Krishna at the time of death then he may merge into Krishna mm -hmm. like any Mayavadi, Mayavadi or Brahmavadi. Mm -hmm. So Rupa Goswami is telling us, Krishnam Smaram, remember Krishna, Janam Chasya, along with his associates. Shabtresh on Janasya. Prastam Nija Samihitam, one should choose a particular associate of Krishna in Braj. And Tattakatara Tascaso Kuryad Vasam Sada, always residing in Braj by body or if not by body, at least by heart by body and mind, one should reside in Braj and always hearing the sweet Harikata of the pastimes of Krishna with the associate to whom one wants to follow. For example, if one is remembering how Mother Yashoda is, loves Krishna, how she's always serving him and taking care of him, giving him her breast milk, then remembering this at the time of death, uh, one should become... Yashoda, not Krishna. Only how she loves Krishna, but we'll have to follow Jasoda. And those who are more higher, they will always follow gopis. How they love Krishna? How Krishna is testing and how is Krishna not that attachment? This only how gopis are. Go on, go on. So how are serving gopis, in fact mood, no self-gratification, nothing. But they, do, they are decorating their hairs for Krishna. They are abusing Krishna for Krishna, to please Krishna. If Brahma is doing, they are like us. Sahasya uh, Sahasya or uh, and the first uh, stroke of of Brahma, Brahma Sanghita. From first stroke of Brahma Sanghita. Iswaraha Paramaha Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadiradi Govinda Sarvakar. Krishna may not see her. But Jai Radha Madhava Jai Kunja Bihari Oh, Krishna will at once, at once come <coughs> here. If Lalita and Gopis are telling, oh, dhot, lampat, <laughs> oh, he, very cheater. In this world, he is the greatest cheater. Oh, he will come. And he will hear from lakhs and lakhs. Yes. <laughs> so, you should remind, it has been given trace on that Oh, follow gopis. Follow ashray tattva, not vishay tattva. <coughs> How they are serving vishay tattva? Who is serving? You should follow that. Then it will be a good result. And then go on. Everything is... Then what became? After that, he became dear. And Navin Krishna Prabhu will explain. When he became dear, he was, he became so afraid of this association. So, when his next birth he became dear, but due to his past birth impression, he did not like an ordinary deer because he has attend the stage of Rati. Rati. So he remembered his past birth, how he became a deer. So he always thinking that how I can get good association. So in forest where there is sages lives, 
He used to graze grass near their cottage and he used to hear Harikatha and never mixed with another deer. Oh, became mixed with another deer, my attachment with God they went there, so I became deer. So I should not mix in deer at all. So now this way he passed his times when his death came, then he prayed Krishna like the voice of a human being. It is impossible to utter or praise Krishna like a human being, but he attained Roti and he is not an ordinary deer. So by the customless grace of Krishna, he praised Krishna and prayer Krishna. So next part he became Bharat. In third. In third part. It is called Jav Bharat. Because he never... Why he became Brahmin? Because now he was thinking of Krishna and his associates. Because he was thinking Krishna specially. Not deer and not anything else. During his death, he never thinking about deer or anything else. Because he knows everything. So he as thinking he was thinking about Krishna specially, his associates. So he became in Brahmin family. Just like we have seen in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, Suchinang Srimatange He Joga Prasta Pajayate. So he came in Brahmin family and they are devotee. His, pa- his father tried at his level of rest. Here I want to tell you that if you are thinking that now we should have attachment with my father, mother, husband, children, and with my dogs, no harm, I can have two, three, very Bulldogs. Hound dogs. Uh, dogs. I should attach. But at the time of that I will not remember. This is absurd. So from beginning you should do. Be careful. Like Bhat Maharaj in this, um, in the form of deer. Oh, from beginning. He was very alert for this. Otherwise, you will be upset at the time of death, some cough will come and it will be ghar 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 and you will forget everything, so much pain will come, you cannot do anything. But if you are for beginning, chanting, remembering, then that no influence of this maya. At that time, you can remember Krishna. Go on. So Guru just told now, instruct us that which it practice every day, it bound to come during death. Just like Vajamil, he has so much attached with his youngest son, Narayan. When death came, he automatically uttered Narayan, but what not Narayan Vaikuntharipati, but this name of Bhagavan, so Bhagavan is so merciful, he sent his associates to rescue Vajamil from Jamaduta. So when Guru told just now, that in the old age we are choked out by so what Vishnu Acharya pray to Krishna, Oh Krishna, the Krishna Tadya Pada Pankaja Panyaranta Maddaita Manasa Visavaraja Hamsa Prana Prayana Samaya Kapavata Pithai Kantavaradanam Vida Uphadananka Taste. Oh Krishna, I want my mind will be attached with your lotus feet. Just like someone of Manasarava, they always take that come uh, that lotus stem. stem, he never takes smell anything else. Similarly, I want my mind will be attached with your lotus feet. My mind like so on and your lotus like feet like a lotus stem. Because if I think that my eyes are too bhajan in old age, it is not possible. Why not? Because in old age there are so many diseases and my voice will be choked due to mucus. And so many things, so painful, I could not remember your even name also, whatever to utter. So I want that my mind will be fixed at the same in beginning. So if we practice from beginning, then we are never to suffer. Then come to subject. So Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj, he became Jal Bharat. His father tried at his level best to teach him own. He never uttered. He wanted to put. He wanted to give him sacred thread. This not happened for him. 
So he had more brothers and sister-in-law. After his father passed away, they treat Bharat Maharaj, Jodo Bharat, like an animal. They peel up vegetables, they boil together, the husk they boil together and supply him. He happily eat and became so happy. Their father engaged him to protect that field. That any when his father passed away, gave, he used to give some good teachings. Uh, like a mad, <laughs> like mad, sometimes like that dumb. He was not that little really dumb, but he used to like act that. If anyone telling good things, from, then he and <laughs> going here and there like mad. All they used to think that he is mad, but actually he was mad of Krishna. So actually Bhagavan was not mad, he acted like a man. Sometimes without any cause laughing, sometimes weeping. Why so? If any high cause of devotee, his external activities like this, why so? The supported by Srimad Bhagavatam. Evang Brata Sabdiya Nava Krita Jatanu Rago Tachitta Ucchai Hasatta Thodurati Dauti Gayatun Mado Bhadnitta Tiloka Vajja Evang Brata Sabdiya Nava Krita Sid means remembering his own favorite name. Just like Gurudev explained just now about Kunja Bihari. When he is remembering about Kunja Bihari or Jaya Radha Madhava, Radha Madhava means here the possible deity of Jayadev Goswami. When Krishna wanted to pacify Radhika but could not do so, so he offered his foot in lotus, his, her lotus feet and telling Smaralala Khandanam. Mamasirasi Mandanam Dehi Padapallava Mudaram. Remember when this pastimes manifest in his heart, he began to laugh without any cause. But material person, they could not understand why he is laughing. Sometimes due to separation of by between different couple, he is weeping. Material person could not understand why he is weeping. So he is acting like a madman, but not mad, he is mad for Krishna Prem. So there were other things, he is a mad and dumb. So they engage him to protect the field. There are so many grains that any, any an animal, any animal or bird should not destroy the field. He was backing towards field and remembering Krishna. Animal is grazing, bird is coming, no care. So one day, one group of decoids, they get the Raj, so many things, and they promise to demigodes Kali, if we get so many oil, we shall offer one human being like a goat to offer you in fire sacrifice. So they catch one person, by chance that person run away from their group. Then they are thinking what to do. It is night time, they went out for searching any good person. Then they saw one very good person, very good qualification because there is no, according to the name of fire sacrifice, they are not suitable any card, nothing any wrong in his limbs or body. So they found that boy is very good. They catch him, Bharat Maharaj flow, Bharat Maharaj came with them and followed them, Jal Bharat. They feed him, he took full stomach, they give some red, Cloth cloth on his neck, neck happily accept it. Then they put his neck on one wood. After that they tied it and they Will chopped him. his neck. So when they are... But no red. problem for... Oh, better I will have his body of any high class of devotee. Then I will remember and do all these things. Oh, I'm changing my clothes like. It is due to my past, past uh, activity. No hot they should. And for us it will be very big problem. <laughs> for him no problem at all. Then? So Jorobha has no problem because he can compromise everything, reconcile everything in all stages. He is thinking, Tattenu kampam susumiksha mano bhunya nebatma kritam vipakam Hridvāgh-bhopu-hir-vidhanna-maste jivet-jo-sa-mukti-pade-dāyabhār. 
is taken no, due to my past bad activities, I have to suffer, no problem. Next time I can be a good devotee and I shall do bhajan. Fad is full pain. They are now ready to chop his neck. Oh, to cut his head and give it to fire sacrifice. So when they are ready to cut his neck, and a tremendous sound came from that big piece, demigod Scully, and he took the sword from that decoyer, and immediate he cut the all necks and offered to him fire swaha. And he came to Bharat Maharaj and he untied his neck and folded her hand and told, Oh, you are so high class of devotee. You are cheating all. You are also cheating me. You are cheating all and like cheating me. Dumb man. Acting like a dumb man, you are cheating the whole like world. Mad man. Be piteous to all, merciful to all. Oh. And he then went away. So, any problem comes, don't be upset. Never try to tolerate it like Bhat Maharaj. Then happily you can chant Hare Krishna. But always problem, 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 new, 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 creating. Oh, he has insulted. I will have to see. I will have to revenge, take revenge. Oh, this person. Always in anger mood, always in these problems, problems. Try to solve the problems and take them in favor, favor, favorable. And then you should be like Bhat Maharaj. After that what began? Pandarik Prabhu is here. Where is he? Ah, yeah. After that what began? Once Rahugan was going, to couple Dev Ashram and then what become? Began. So now, as the pastime further goes on, Maharaj Rahugun, he wants to get the enlightenment, he wants to know about the soul, Atma Tattva, Atma Tattva how to <coughs> practice the science of self realization and Krishna consciousness. So for this, he was coming to the ashram of Kapil Muni and he was riding in a palanquin and his palanquin was taken on shoulders by four of his servants, very strong men and he was riding very comfortably. As he was going to the forest, then one of his servants got sick and he had to give up the palanquin. Now three of the servants, it was difficult for them to carry on the palanquin. So they were looking for some person who can do this job. So at that opportunity, at that time, they noticed that one nice, healthy, fatty person was sitting and he was uh, in a very shabby cloth. So they thought maybe he's a very good person. We should get him to do this job. So they called him and as usual we heard Bharat Maharaj, he is completely unaware of his uh, surroundings in the sense that he has nothing to do with this, whether his body is put in a comfortable situation or is in a difficult situation, he is not bothered. So they asked to ask him to come and uh, take the palanquin of the shoulder because this is king who is riding the palanquin. So Bharat Maharaj, he did not uh, resist it at all and he came along with this uh, other servants. And then they gave one of the, uh, the rods of the palanquin in the front side with one of the servants. And as they were driving, because Bharat Maharaj is such a ha uh, high advanced devotee, when he was walking, he was looking at the ground very carefully, so that he may not step over any ant or other insects. So as he was doing, he has to walk in a zigzag way. Now, when he was walking in such a manner, the palanquin was going disordered. So, the palanquin was shaking and the king was like almost falling on one side and trying to save himself and then he rebuked his servant oh what are you doing why are you, why are you not carrying the palanquin as you were carrying before smoothly and then the servant replied because they were afraid he's king he will quickly punish them so they said oh lord it's not our fault 
This is the new person who doesn't know how to lift the palanquin. So he's, he's the cause of this problem. So then he looked at Bharat Maharaj, the king, Rahuguna, he looked at Bharat Maharaj, Jad Bharat and told him, Oh, you new person, you should be careful. I'm the king of this state. You should carry the pan queen very carefully and with honor. So as he said, and they started walking again. And after moving again, but Bharat Maharaj was, was, was least affected by the words of this king because he's completely situated in himself. No insult, no praise can affect him. So as he is walking again in the same fashion, now the king became so much disturbed and he became so angry and he started chastising and with very bad words he rebuked Jadu Bharat. And oh, you are so fat <laughs> and you, you cannot carry. I will punish you. I am king. You are my subject. Go on. So as all these words king spoke to Jadu Bharat Maharaj, he was very calm and smoothly and in a smiling way, he said, just murmured in a whispering voice, he said, Who is fat? Who is skinny? Who is king? Who is servant? Who is riding the palanquin? Who is caring? When he was Who will punish? If there is weight, then we should carry. If there is no weight, nothing to carry. <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then now when Maharaj Rahugun he heard these words from the mouth of such a pure Mahabharata devotee they had a very deep effect on his heart and also as his purpose is to come and know the signs of self-realization he, he became alert by hearing these words and he got off the palanquin and paid his obeisances to Jad Bharat Maharaj and first he asked for forgiveness and then he said oh great devotee who are you why you are hiding yourself from this world and you are keeping yourself disguised as a very crazy man or who doesn't know anything. But the words which I just heard from your mouth, they sound like you are some pure devotee. Are you Kapil Dev? I was going to say... I have some doubts and then questions. I wanted to solve, but by my intelligence I could not. So I was going to Kapil Dev to put all these my doubts that who, who is Atma, who is super soul, how we can have that knowledge. So I could not understand what you are telling. So I want that you should explain more that I can realize all these things. Who are you? Please tell me. Then Jarvarat Maharaj first told him about... He began to smile out of pity, mercy. And she told that. Have you heard the name of any Bharat? Oh, I have heard he was my... In, in, my, dynasty. Dynasty. in, my, dynasty. in my dynasty. In my dynasty. Very big king of the whole world. In After his name, this name of Bharata Varsha. Oh, he was. Oh, I am the same Bharat. And then he began so happy. Oh, this is the mercy of Gurudev. He will tell something to his disciple that he was, oh, he is very high class. Of, I must have so much faith on him. So making his faith on him, he told like so, that he will have so much regard for my words. And then he will have so much faith on me. And then what I will tell, he will, will bound to obey. obey. That is why he told. Then what became? And then in the conversation of Jadabharat Maharaj and Maharaj Rahugun, we hear very wonderful instructions. Oh, thank you to come. My heartly blessings to you. From where? Mayabi? No, no, where we met? Miami, Miami. In Miami. In Miami. Very good. Have you met in Miami? Oh, yeah, Miami. Oh, but I came from you. Thank you. Now, then what became? Here. So, then Maharaj Jarabharat spoke about the qualities and characteristics of Atma, the soul, and told him that how there is big difference between conscious and inert. What is inert? This body. And within this body, there is a subtle body. 
and within that subtle body, who they told? Maharaj Jodhra Bharat. No, he is putting question. He told, no, Bharat Maharaj told, no, that we are no concern with uh, material happiness and certain distress and everything. We are out of all by our constitutional form. constitutional form. We are eternal servant of Krishna. But the, now we have come, we have forgotten Krishna. And we are thinking that, oh, we are now suffering. Oh, birth and death, oldness and all. But actually, there is no relation with all these things. He is out of all these things, Atma. Then he questioned. What question? So, he posed the question that if the soul or Atma is completely different from this body mm. and he has nothing to do with the body, why? Because no material force can touch the soul in any circumstances. And we also hear in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna telling Arjuna all the qualities of soul that it is indestructible, water cannot wet it, fire cannot burn it, air cannot dry it, no weapon can cut it, it's eternal, it's sublime, happy, blissful. So how is that, that when the soul is in the body, then he's affecting pain, happiness and sorrow. Then who is feeling pain? Who is suffering? Pain. Who is thinking that I am dying? Oh, I have taken birth. Who? If there is no connection. connection. Then Bharat Maharaj. Then Jad Bharat Maharaj told the example of one instance when we want to cook rice. Then what? Bharat Maharaj not told. This was his question. You should try to understand. His question was, if there is a fire, pour some pot on fire, keep some water in pot, and if the heat comes from fire, and touch this pot, and in pot water becomes, and if there is some rice there, what will be? They will be cooked. They will be boiled. And they will be like? Rice. A rice. Boiled rice. So here, our, this body is like a pot. This is question. Pot. And for the, for, fire. fire, what is? So many problems. Three Sufferings. Three taps. Shatam and all others. And in that pot there is mind, like water. And in water there is rice. So this is body, it is put on fire, fire is all these things, what I told, sufferings and other things. And in that pot there is mind. If that mind is heated by that, then Atma, soul, must be feeling pain. He will be boiled. So I think that Atma is feeling all sufferings. Then Bhat Maharaj told them, don't think like that. Not like that. If there is uh, this in body, there is a sukshma body, shuttle body. body, and in that Atma and Paramatma are there. If no attachment with anyone worldly things, then fire will not touch 